Fine, so this is the worksheet for Unit 4 and the multiple choice. Now remember when we're doing multiple choice it's always important to look for a principle or a, an equation uh, that will help you to solve the problem. Also very important to read through the questions very carefully. So which graph correctly shows how the acceleration A of a particle undergoes undergoing simple harmonic motion varies with displacement X from its equilibrium position. So what's important here is to identify what is the equation between your A and your X. And obviously that is going to be our definition minus omega squared X is our defining equation. So what, what sort of relationship is this? This is between A and X. Uh, this is a directly proportion, but we're going to have a, a negative um, slope because we've got that. So it would be um, A would be the correct answer there. Okay, so important that we this that you identify this and then being able to analyze that. Going on to question two. It's this one over here. It says a mass on the end of a horizontal spring is displaced from its equilibrium position by distance A and released. Its subsequent oscillations have a total energy E and a time period T. An identical mass is attached to an identical spring. The displacement is 2A. Assuming this spring obeys Hooke's law, which of the following gives the correct time period and total energy? So looking at time period and total energy. Okay, now for simple harmonic motion, um, I hope that all of you are okay, that it's got to be one of these two because the time period is going to remain the same. So, I hope we've got that clear. But um, which, what about energy? Now we're looking at this A is amplitude, so our A corresponds to our X. Now how does the energy correspond to our X? Now we need to see what our defining formula is. So let's just pull up our um, equations here. Which equation are we going to look at? So we're looking at total energy and we see that it is dependent, the ET is dependent on an X0 squared. This is very important, the squared here. So going back to our Going back to which one would it be? Because it's a squared term, we're doubling, we're doubling our amplitude, so it must be 4e and t. So a would be the correct answer. Going into question three and four. Um, it says over here, in which of the following regions of the electromagnetic spectrum is radiation of wavelength 600 nanometers located? So um, you've got to know this, you've got to have an idea of your electromagnetic spectrum, what are the wavelengths of, of them, and it would be visible light. So that's something basically you've got to know. For question four, what is the best estimate for the refractive index of a medium in which light travels at a speed of 2.7 times 10 um, to the, sorry I can't read that very carefully, let me just check it out, 2 times 7 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Okay, so what formula are we going to look at here? Let's just go to our formula booklet. Um, we're going to be looking at this formula over here. Um, so we are dealing with that. Now, um, so going back to my question, we have got that um, N1 over N2 is equal to V2 over V1. So let's say that our refractive index um, of our medium, let's say that's N2, and that will be V2 in the medium, um, and then our N1. Um, well, actually, we we want to let's let's just do it the other way around. Sorry, um, let's say our N1 is the medium that we're looking at, and our N2 um, would be our refractive index um, 
in a vacuum. Let's say this is, so this would actually be 1 equal 1. Uh, that's in a vacuum. And that's going to equal to V2 over V1. Now, uh, V2 in a vacuum is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And here this is 2.7 times 10 to the 8. Um, so when we divide that out, we get to C. We'll get to 1.1. Let's do so to be 1.1. Okay, so just making sure that these correspond. If we choose N1 to be for the vacuum, then we know that that will be the speed of light in the vacuum. So it's pretty straightforward just making sure that you keep in control of putting the same thing, uh, the, the corresponding things together. Good, going on to question four. Sorry, question five. It says, for a system executing simple harmonic motion, the restoring force acting on the system is proportional to the... All right, so is proportional to it. This is just straight from your uh, definition. Um, and it's obviously going to be A, the displacement of a system from the equilibrium. Remember our basic formula defining simple harmonic motion is this, where omega is the angular frequency and x is the, is the displacement from the equilibrium. So I hope you all would have got that, no problem. Going on to question six. Question six. It says here, a cart is connected to two identical springs, is oscillating with simple harmonic motion between the points X and Y that are equidistant from point zero. Now, because these are two equidis identical springs, um, and this is equidistant, we would assume that your zero um, at your at your zero or your O point um, would be your equilibrium point, and that these are going between X and Y. Okay, so um, for this it says the cart is at equilibrium. Uh, it would be only at B. It, sorry, it would be only at O, so it would be B. Six, does that make s I hope that makes sense to you. Because um, as it goes here, it stretches out there, and you're getting compression of the spring, so you're getting a force there, and you're getting a force of that spring pulling in that direction. When the cart is in this over here, you're getting, a, you're getting the reverse, you're getting the double push on that side. Only at z this point over here will there be an equal pull from both, both springs. So that's B. Going down to 7. During one complete oscillation, the amplitude of a damped harmonic of a damped harmonic motion changes from 1.5 to 0 0.3 centimeters. The total energy of the oscillation is E2, and the total energy at the beginning is E1. The ratio of that is to that. So what is the defining equation that we're going to be looking at? So we've got our defining our E total, remember, is equal to our half m omega squared x zero squared. So we're talking about here um, our the amplitude, which gives us our our x zero. So um, we're going to have our our e um, if we took a e one, that would equal a half m omega squared x. Um, actually, well, we know that's going to be one point five. 1.5 squared and our E2 would equal the same thing to be a half m omega squared but now it's going to be 0 0.3 squared so these would all cancel out um, so you're going to get 1.5 squared now um, we're going to get 1.5 squared divided by 0 0.3 squared um, and um, with that, um, we're going to get 1 over 25. Do we see this over here? Um, 
actually I've got these the reverse way around haven't I so this should actually be e2 over e1 we're looking at e2 over e1 so that would be 0 0.3 squared over 1.5 squared um, we could write that as 0 0.3 over 1.5 the whole thing squared could divide both by 0 0.3 we get 1 over 5 squared and that will be 1 over 25 so there's our, our answer there for that okay so again very important what is your defining equation look at that and work with that really important to do that okay going on to question eight this is quite a big question I'm not sure if I'm gonna fit it all on here oh there we are I can do it okay so it says plane waves travel are incident on a boundary between two media labeled one and two in the diagram the diagram the wave fronts is drawn to scale so we got these as one centimeters is that distance over there the ratio of the refractive index of the medium 2 to that of medium 1 is okay now um, because we have our frequency remains the same we know that our velocity is going to be if we've got velocity is equal to frequency times wavelength our velocity is going to be proportional uh, to our um, to our wavelength and the frequency remains the same so if I've got um, v1 over v2 like that um, so we're looking at um, we would obviously be using this formula over here n1 as to n2 is equal to v2 as to v1 um, so the refractive index of medium 2 to that of medium 1 so let's um, let's put that the other way around so we'd have n2 as to n1 is going to equal um, v1 as to v2 and that could be written as frequency lambda 1 frequency lambda 2 and those frequencies would actually cancel out so all we've basically got to do is we've got to measure this and we've got to measure that now when I measure this um, when I measure this distance um, here um, this is longer than that as you can see alright this is longer than that and when I measure that distance and I measure that distance and I divide the two because this is the the this distance between there and there is giving you wavelength 2 and this distance here is giving you wavelength 1 and when you put that in you're going to get um, you're going to get 0 0.6 0 0.67 is going to is going to come out there okay again the, the important thing identify your equation um, understand your theory behind it um, and then you can apply it going on to qu question 9 it says a wave pulse is traveling uh, to the right on a string which of the following best represents the direction of the velocity of point P okay now it's velocity uh, of point P so <coughs> um, what's going to happen to this particle well this particle is actually the next part of this wave is actually going to be below it so it's actually accelerating downwards um, like that so B would be the <coughs> would be the answer to that so it's going down so its direction of displacement and its velocity is in that direction well the changing displacement would be in that direction <coughs> 